Ah, flower and fauna. It is such an amazing thing to work with. Hello? Hello? Uh, uh, up a bit. Yeah, to your left. Ah, yeah. <coughs> hey, hello there. Uh, I'm Kevin, also known as Arts by Kevin in Webs. Now, it may seem like I've gone into a bit of a pickle. Yes, that is uh, very, very well observed. Um, <laughs> uh, blood is starting to get to my head, so it's not super easy to think here. Um, so, yeah, I've been building and working a bit on the Tameless server, and the inhabitants around me aren't super friendly, if you know what I mean, wink wink. Uh, but if you do take a look down to the right, yeah, down to the right there, exactly. You see that we have custom geometries for the flora in the world around us. And that is what I want to talk a bit about today. Uh, do you want to take me down, by the way? Hello? Hel hello? 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 This is the second video in this series, and what we're going to do today is to talk about how to add your custom models to foliage in your surrounding using block states. All right, before we get going, worth knowing is that the blocks behind me are actually some of the few blocks in Minecraft that can carry color via the color maps. Now, even if we were to apply the specific thing that are defined in these files, we wouldn't get access to actually changing the other colors around the world on other blocks using that variable. So yeah, let's jump into Blockbench and make a few models to put into the game. All right, here in Blockbench, I'm making a Java block slash item model. I'm just gonna call this one plant. I'm gonna tick ambient occlusion off and then just confirm it like that. Then the two blocks I have here, which are made flat, I'm going to create a texture for them, call that one plant as well. I'm going to make a template like so, then set 32 to 32 there and nothing more to it. Now you can see that we're definitely using this canvas really poorly. That is not a big issue though, because what I want to do here is just to get you through the idea of actually making a model like this and then some tweaking we can do in the game world. So a few things I'm also going to do is that I'm going to export this model so that we have a few different versions, one with one leaf and one with a few more leaves. So that's why I'm starting with this basic model. Then I can just use the basic model to make a few more models with. And I'll get to that in a second. Let's first make a texture for this one. All right, this is where we are now. We have made a bit of a texture to this plant and I'm gonna duplicate one of these leaves and fold that over to the other side and then pull that down just slightly down the stem like that. Now, in a sense, we kind of have our own 3D plant here straight away, ready to be put into the game. So I'm gonna do a few of these and then export them one by one. Cause what we're gonna do after that is to jump into Minecraft and first of all, see what it looks like when we put this in and also how to get them into the game world. So just before we step into something else, I have just exported the final version of the plant that I have here. As you can see, I've made a few more leaves and I kind of lent the stem a bit and added another rotation to the stem so it's more cohesive. But something I thought of that would be kind of well good to bring up to you right now is that if you have a model like this, remember that this is the center of the block it's going to be placed on, flowers naturally and dynamically have a bit of a spread to them. But if you want to increase that spread even further, you can actually pull this model and place it to the side when you export it. This means that when you place it in the world, it's going to be located on this side of the block. If we think of the block as this square here in the middle of my working space, they will be located on this edge of the block when we put it in the world. This is super good if you want to add rotations and move our things around and try to go for an even more dynamic approach and feel in the world itself by adding these custom models. Moving them about on the workspace is one of many ways to make them more dynamic in the world when we place them. So that's just a thing I thought I'd mention before I step into the game. Oh yeah, by the way, do you recall that we can't just drag and drop it into the resource pack to make it work? We actually have to define block states to get these models to show in our game world. So let's do that first and foremost. If I click escape here and let's jump into the browser. You see how we have the folder block states, models and textures. What have I done with these since last time? Well, in models I made a new folder that I called custom veg which would be vegetation in this case. And I put our folder files there. So we have 
pad plant one, two, three, four, and five. We're also gonna go into these files in a second and see what they're about. And then in the textures folder, I put the custom vague texture. And as you know from how I did it, there is only one texture and this is a really optimized way to do it. I have five different models, but I only have one texture to apply all of those models with a look. Even though the texture is just a stem and one leaf, I can get many different models out of that if I'm just clever with how I place them about. So now with that said, we're going to also go into block states and here I've made a new file called poppy. So it's going to replace the poppy in the Minecraft world. And in the actual setup itself, if we go here and take a look in the background, in the poppy right now I've set it to only display the custom vague plant called pad plant 1. So we're going to see what that looks like in the game here now in a second. So let's take a poppy to look at. We take the regular poppy, we place it down, and look and behold, there is our poppy, our custom made model. Now I want to prove a point with this. You see how my poppy has a custom certain green to it, which is painted into the actual texture itself. And you can also see how Minecraft has this, like I mentioned in Blockbench, this natural displacement of things. Really nice, but of course we want to play a bit more with it. Oh yeah, before you ask, I do have a poppy in my hand. And as you can see here on the folder that I have open, I've placed an item model for the poppy here in a folder called item. And this allows me to have the poppy display in the game world like we have it right here in my inventory so that I can hold it in my hand. Just so that I know that it is the poppy indeed that I'm placing. Uh, so yeah, if you make custom models like this and you want them to display in the inventory, you have to put the model files also in the items folder in Minecraft. But now let's take a look at what we can do to customize the poppy that we have in the background on the ground by adding all of the other models to it the same way we did with the blocks, the stone that we have on the wall here. So in our poppy plant block state file, like we had before, as I said, I defined the first model. Now I want to add all of the other ones. So what I would normally do is to add a comma, paste the next one, and then rename this to whatever the other file is, which would be two in this case. However, I already know when I'm about to put these files in that I want to add a bit of a modulation to the main file. So what I'm going to do instead is to copy all of that, place a comma, paste that again, paste that again, paste that again like so, so it's clean and easy to follow, and make another comma at the end because we're going to continue, then do double drops down so it's easy to see what we're doing here. And in here I'm going to do nothing on this line, so I want to keep this in order. Tidy code is always good to have. I'm going to do a Y here, and I'm going to do this 90. This means that one of these models has a chance to rotate around the Y axis 90 degrees. Now I'm going to copy this, paste that here and here, and I'm going to want make this one 180 and this one 270. This means now that this main plant that we made has a chance, if I were to remove this comb actually and step this code back up, to display either the normal way, in a 90 degree rotation, in a 180 degree rotation, or in 270 degree rotation, which means an increment of 90 degrees every time. So if we go into Minecraft and load this back up, you now notice that all of the poppies have indeed started to rotate around in their spots. Now, this model wasn't really intricate in that regard because it's essentially the same on both sides. I don't think there was any rotation that differed between the two different sides on this one. I think they're quite equal and even, like you can see it on his one here. So making a rotation like that in this case isn't super helpful. So I know that for model one, but all of the other ones are changed. So let's jump back into the code a bit. For model one then, we can leave out the 180 and 270 because the model is the same thing around. But I'm not going to remove that just yet, because I want to copy all of this code first, make a comma like I said there, and paste it once more. Now I can jump in and remove these rotations that wasn't present in the first model, but at least have everything there for the second model to be implemented. And since I've used a clever naming convention, all I need to do is now to replace the number one with number two, because the number two is our plant pad, or pad plant number two up here. Now I have all the way up to number 5, so I'm going to do the same thing here again. Of course, don't forget the comma there, so that it knows it's supposed to continue. Comma there. Paste all of that. Comma there. Nope, actually that doesn't look too good. I'm going to put the comma up here. There we go. And paste once more. And comma there. And paste once more. Let's now double check 2. We're going to make all of these 3, like so. And we're going to make all of these ones 4. Scroll down, get all of the 4s in there. 
good and then a five now we have all five different models ready to go into the game and they all have the rotation 90 180 and 270 degrees this is indeed going to put all of our custom models into the game as you see it is a lot of code at first glance but what is interesting about the code that is it not really that difficult to understand and especially not when you line it up like this clean and clear like okay number one two three four and five it's kind of easy to just figure out what you need to replace in order to get this to work. And as soon as you learn about the syntaxes like rotation around Y, X, Z, or weight and things like that, you can really start to play around with this. But we're going to do it like this and jump back into Minecraft and reload once more. And now we can see that all of our custom poppy models have indeed been placed into the game. It's a bit hard to see from up here, so let's jump down a bit. See here, we got a good spread of all of the five different models that I put over the poppy design in the game. Whoop, let's go. Let's place a few more, like a so. We can actually jump down into this custom world that we were building, world well, the terrain we were building before, and start placing these about. And you can see how dynamic they generate by just letting them be random at about the equal amount of chance. Place them about like this, and we get them around our world. Looking really fancy and snazzy, I'd say. But... I also want to prove another point, and this is what I meant about the carrying over color. Because if I were to take the grass now and replace that with this color, or this plant altogether, what the grass is going to do is that it's going to force its own color on top of this. And how would I work around that? Well, let's first of all make that happen. So we'll open up our explorer once more. We are going to go into block states. We're going to copy the poppy, and we're going to rename this one to grass nothing more nothing less that's all we got to do and then we jump back into the game engine like so let's clear it up so update and now grass has also been replaced and as you can see grass does not carry its own hard color because what i've done in the file is that nothing with this poppy allows the grass to override its current color but there is a way to actually make it do that how would I go about making it override the color of grass? Then we're starting to think about how I need to edit the model file itself. So we're going to go into the model file of one of these poppies and actually add that change directly to it. And you'll see how much that affects the grass in game. Okay, if you recall a moment ago, we had a grass and poppy that were both the very same vibrant model that the poppy had. Now we've gone about and changed a few things. So you can see that the grass actually colors the very same way that the biome around it colors. And if we take a look over here, we can see the same thing happens for all of these examples. Grass right here keeps that biome color. Grass over here in the savanna keeps that color. Grass over here in the taiga has a very cold color, just like the taiga biome itself. And this is controlled by the color maps in the resource pack. But how did I do this? Well, a few things had to happen first. One of them was that I, in the actual textures, had to make a new texture that I've made gray, and I cleaned it up with Photoshop so that it was a bit brighter than the initial one, because you kind of have to do that when you just remove color from something to keep the vibrance and nuance of the actual impact it has, or to just black and white the version that you already have. So that happened first and foremost. Then I made a few more files. We had, for example, a duplicate of the file called pad underscore plant three. I copied that and renamed it pad underscore plant x and in this file i've added this particular code right here the in quotation mark tint index zero this is what allows foliage to carry the color of the color maps in the world and then i've applied it to all sides of all elements in the file one by one or as you can do in not plus 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 just auto replace it all with a, a bit of a command which is kind of nifty to have about and then also what i've done is that in the poppy block state file we had all of these versions defined but what i did instead in my case was that i cleaned it up and i only kept the things i needed for plant x to be shown because why would i show any more plants when i just have to make this one to give an example to you so plant x is now the one that is present in the grass Plant X has a tint index to the actual model file itself. And if you scroll in, so you can really see what the code looks like. You have north, UV, all of that. The texture is defined, which is zero, which we have referenced up here. And the tint index is written in here so that it knows it's supposed to carry the color of the vegetation around it. Now, there is something we want to try out, which could be interesting indeed. And I am not sure 
if you know what's going to happen when I do this. So let's go back into our explorer and we're going to go back into block states. And what I'm going to do next is to duplicate our grass JSON. And what I'm going to do next as well is to rename this one into, for example, ox I dicey. I think dicey. I think that's the way it's spelled. We'll leave that one be and jump into Minecraft once more. Gonna update that and like so, we're back into the game. Let's open up and bring out the Oxide Daisy. Oxide Daisy. I do believe I did that the right way. I'm gonna place this one down. <gasps> but it's gray. It's gray, but it holds the tint index. Now, this is the bit of a proof that I wanted to get to earlier. Just because we make the tint index to all files doesn't mean that all files will actually carry the tint index across. There are set blocks in Minecraft that actually allows you to use tint index as a format for them. Leaves, grass, regular grass blocks, the one I'm standing on right now, and then of course the ferns, and double grass and double ferns and so on. But those are the only ones. If you want to do something else using the flowers and things like that, or even regular blocks, we have to rely on actually hard making the textures ourselves with the color we want them to have in the world. We cannot cheese it by using tint index. But it's good to know about tint index, because sometimes maybe you want to make plants and foliage that carries the color of the in-game world, like these ones right here, for something in your product. And in that case, it's really good to use the tint index and replace grass and the masses that actually holds that tint index value applicable to them. I hope that you enjoy this little video tutorial. And in the next one, we're gonna take a closer look at what exactly usually goes wrong in our files and what we need to do in order to fix that when we're working with something like this. So what I'm gonna do is to go ahead and plan a bunch of different errors that we're then gonna solve. And that will be the next part to the series. I hope that you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to join the Patreon if you are looking for some cool models every month and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye bye!